You tell me that law is above freedom of utterance. And I reply that you can have no wise laws nor free entertainment of wise laws unless there is free expression of the wisdom of the people. And, alas, their folly with it. In 1923, William Allen White became the first Kansan to win the prestigious Pulitzer Prize for his editorial to an anxious friend. The Kansas Humanities Council and the Pulitzer Foundation will be celebrating 100 years of the Pulitzer and White's legacy throughout 2016. But if there is freedom, folly will die of its own poison and the wisdom will survive. That is the history of the race. It is proof of man's kinship with God. In the early 1920s, America was experiencing some tumultuous times, and Kansas was too. Coal miners in Crawford and Cherokee counties marched in protest, railroad workers went on strike, and Kansans, like many Americans, found themselves rising up with the workers, demanding things like safer working conditions, fair pay, and even reasonable time off. Now, Governor Allen, who was the governor of Kansas at the time, and the state legislators believed that government had the responsibility to curb speech in times of chaos as a way to protect peace. And White disagreed. And in fact, he argued that it was during these chaotic times when freedom of expression was really at its most vital. You say that freedom of utterance is not for time of stress. And I reply with the sad truth that only in time of stress is freedom of utterance in danger. No one questions it in calm days because it is not needed. And the reverse is true also. Only when free utterance is suppressed is it needed. And when it is needed, it is most vital to justice. Tensions simmered, finally came to a head in Emporia when White placed a pro-labor sign in the front window of the Emporia Gazette, the newspaper that he owned. And he was promptly arrested for that action. His response, White's response, was to write this essay to an anxious friend in which he implored Governor Allen and the legislators to protect freedom of speech for the good of our state. Peace is good, but if you are interested in peace through force and without free discussion, that is to say, free utterance decently and in order. Your interest in justice is slight. And peace without justice is tyranny, no matter how you may sugarcoat it with expedience. This state today is in more danger from suppression than from violence, because in the end, suppression leads to violence. Violence, indeed, is the child of suppression. Tested and contested by every generation of Kansans, freedom of speech is a right that belongs to all of us. Whoever pleads for justice helps to keep the peace. And whoever tramples on the plea for justice, temperately made in the name of peace, only outrages peace and kills something fine in the heart of man, which God put there when we got our manhood. When that is killed, brute meets brute on each side of the line. So, dear friend, put fear out of your heart. This nation will survive. This state will prosper. The orderly business of life will go forward if only men can speak in whatever way given them to utter what their hearts hold. By voice, by posted card, by letter, or by press. Reason has never failed men. Only force and repression have made the wrecks in the world. <laughs>